Greetings, brothers and sisters. Well, Jojo Magoo just let the cat out of the bag. Um, he's pretty clueless. They, you know, they only feed him limited amounts of information because his brain is no longer working, and he's not really, you know, anything but a bad figurehead. I mean, he's a disaster because you might as well get a good actor that's young and confident if you're going to have somebody be a complete puppet. Uh, but he, it says here. Biden tells Middle East leader the U.S. is not going anywhere. And that's the kind of thing you say when you are definitely collapsing and you're going somewhere, right? <laughs> you know, when you're reassuring people, and I'll get to the video, it's even worse than the headline. When you're reassuring people, that means everyone knows that you're done and you're just trying to keep, you know, the illusion going that you're not, right? And so... um you know, whenever you're talking about, like, nobody was saying this in the 90s or the 2000s or even the 2010s or the 2015s. They're only saying it now in the 2020s, right? No one no one had to go to the Middle East and say, America isn't going anywhere anytime before 2019, right? This is uh, the kind of, you know, false bravado you say when when all you have is a sales pitch, but here's what he had to say. Let me state clearly that the United States is going to remain an active, engaged partner in the Middle East. Well, why wouldn't we? <laughs> you know? That's where all the oil is. Why do you have to even state that, right? <laughs> Look at this guy. This guy shows all kinds of confidence, right? This guy's telling you everything you need to know. As the world grows more competitive and the challenges we face more complex... It's only becoming clear to me that how closely interwoven America's interests are with the successes of the Middle East. We will not walk away. Why would we walk away? Why in the world would we walk away from the Middle East, where all the oil is? And leave a vacuum to be filled by China, Russia, or Iran. Okay, that's what's happening. So the reason he's saying this is because Saudi Arabia's talking deals with China and is going to sell them oil in the yuan, the Chinese yuan, Chinese currency, which would be the end of the petrodollar. And of course, Russia is profiting from this war, why America is suffering financially from it. And so is Europe, right? And so it looks like the empire is falling apart. I mean, they all know it, all these other countries. And you got this old, incompetent, mentally you know, mentally failing, uh, you know, shill, political hack. He wasn't even good in his prime, who is, um, you know, nobody has confidence in. And he's a complete joke, right? He's up there trying to sell something nobody's buying. We'll seek to build on this moment with active principle American leadership. So that was that, right? Him saying that. But then this happened as well. Everybody's talking about the so-called fist bump. Here he goes, boom. Well, you get in there, boom. Now, the fist bump was, remember they said handshakes were over, and I didn't care about that. I'm not a big, you know, handshake person. But that was because COVID was thought to be um, surface to surface, right? And then COVID became, I mean, here's a guy carrying a sword and wearing a mask. <laughs> Um, but then it's now airborne, and so there's no reason not to touch somebody else's hand because you don't get COVID from surface-to-surface -surface contact, right? At least, you know. Remember how you had to wash everything, and it was everyone wash your hands all the time, and, you know, then they moved into other, you know, the other whatever, preventions. Um, but this fist bump is totally irrelevant. Like, it's just, you know. Remember him and Joe, Joe, uh, Joe Lieber, uh, him and um, Bernie Sanders touching elbows, remember? With an elbow bump, former... Look at him, look at him put his elbow out like a complete clown. Watch him, right? Let's mute this. Comes out like, hey, look at my elbow. Hey, pal, where's my elbow? I just screwed you. We all just, the Democratic Party just screwed you. You should have won, but we all we all conspired to screw you. But let's bump elbows. <laughs> <laughs> and look at him, look at him. Hey, I did it. Hey, you. Look at why aren't I great? But then, you know, they abandoned that, that theory altogether. And that became something airborne and then something aerosolized. 
So here he is talking about, you know, this um, this conference he just went to. He's trying to sum it up for everybody. His eyes just get more and more, but he's just magooing it more and more. Broader normalization of relations. Second, we concluded a historic deal that uh, to transform a flashpoint at the heart of the Middle East wars into an area of peace. International peacekeepers, including U.S. troops, says in U.S. troops are there, will leave Tehran Island in the Red Sea, where they've been for over 40 years since the Camp David Accords. Five American soldiers died on this strategically located island in 2020. Okay, let's move forward here. In this context, we discussed Saudi Arabia's security needs <coughs> to defend the kingdom. Yeah, he's always touching his face now. He's always got something going on. Given very real threats from Iran and Iran's proxies. Fourth, we concluded several new arrangements to better position <coughs> our nations for the coming decades. Saudi Arabia will invest in new U.S.-led technology to develop and secure reliable 5G and 6G networks. 6G? They're going with 6G already. Industry set global standards. And fifth, we had a good, we had a good d d discussion on ensuring global energy security and adequate oil supplies to support global economic growth. Which means the gas prices are going to stay the same. And that will begin shortly. I'm, and, uh, and I'm doing all I can to increase the supply for the United States of America, which I expect to happen. Someday. The Saudis share that urgency. And based on our discussions today, I expect we'll see further steps in the coming weeks. Finally, we discussed human rights. Human rights, because, well, this is, um, you know, the, he's getting a hard time from the liberals because he came out hard about this Khashoggi thing. And the need for political reform. As always, as I always do, I made clear that the topic is vitally important to me and to the United States. With respect to the murder of Khashoggi. Boom. Point to your eye. I raised it at the top of the meeting, making it clear what I thought of it at the time and what I think of it now. And it was exactly, I was straightforward and direct. He was straightforward and direct. Correct. In discussing it. I made my view crystal clear. He did. He just, he's crystal clear. They know. He, he dropped the hammer while begging for, you know, a few more years before they completely crashed the petrodollar. I said very straightforwardly. Straightforwardly? Was it straightforward? For an American president to be silent on an issue of human rights, is this consistent with, inconsistent with who we are and who I am? Yeah, they say, said it's straightforward. I'll always stand up for our values. So that's a quick summary of tonight's uh, outcomes. Tomorrow, with nine leaders from around the region, we'll have more. One thing we will discuss is the multi-billion dollar commitment of the GCC. Right, let's just see, let's go through this here. To the or criticism of the Saudi administration uh, in other countries was viewed as, to me, a violation of human rights. Mr. Was no Sir, President, Sir, two Mr. quick President, questions, if I may. First, we just heard from Jamal Khashoggi's wife, who said, after this visit, the blood of MBS's next victim is on your hands. What do you say to Mrs. Khashoggi? You're full of shit. I'm sorry she feels that way. I was straightforward back then. I was straightforward today. He's straightforward, and that's all it takes. He's straightforward. No blood on his hands. He's straightforward. What I this is a meeting. Not I didn't come here to meet with the crown prince. I came here to meet with the GCC and nine nations to deal with the security and and uh, the needs of, of the free world. And and nobody cares about Kashobi when gas prices are going up to ten dollars a gallon the United States and not leave a vacuum here, which was happening as it has in other parts of the world. On gas prices, if I may, you said that we'll see relief at some point in the not too distant future. What is the message to Americans who are looking for that relief now? When should they expect to see a real change in prices, though they've already... He's just, he's just clueless. Look, he's just every expression, he looks like a deer in headlights, just completely lost. Look at his face. Just been been coming down. Change. They've already been coming down. That's right. They're they're already been coming down, 10 cents a gallon. They've been coming down every single day, to the best of my knowledge. When will we see the impact of <laughs> Yeah, but your knowledge is... This visit. I suspect you won't see that for another a couple weeks. And, 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 we'll, and we'll see more when we see gas stations start to lower their price consistent with what they're paying for the oil. <laughs> oh, they're, they're, they're gouging you at the gas. Don't blame me. Your gas station, old gas station is gouging you. 
Yeah, that's it. They're, it's their fault. It's not Saudis. It's not my fault. It's a gas station. <laughs> He's just got a clueless look on his face always, right? Brett calling. Uh, touch, your, touch your nose. There you go. Uh, the Saudis a pariah. I don't regret anything I said. Did Do the you still feel, feel that way, though, Mr. President? I just answered your question. Do I regret it? I don't regret anything that I said. What Ever. He doesn't, he doesn't regret anything ever. He never made any mistakes. He's never been dumb before. And I've done some dumb things, and I'll do dumb things again. So ladies and gentlemen, I've been dumb. What happened to Khashoggi was outrageous. Mr. President? It was just outrageous. You know, they, they killed him. It was outrageous. Yes. You're coming under a lot of fire for your fist bump with the crown prince. Why? <laughs> I just wanted to give you a chance to respond to that. But also, how can you be sure that another incident, another murder like Jamal Khashoggi won't happen again? Well, God love you. What a silly question. How could I possibly be sure of any of that? I just made it clear. If anything occurs like that again, they'll get that response and much more. Much more of that response, even though I just went begging him for more oil. Because America's toppling right now. I begged him, don't sell the... Don't sell the the oil and the to the Chinese in, in their currency because that'll they'll collapse the petrodollar. But I said, hey, straightforwardly, hey, don't do that again with Kachobi. Look, you've heard me say before, and when I criticize Xi Jinping for slave labor and what they're doing uh, in in the in the in the, in the, what, in the western mountains of, of China. And he said, I had no right to criticize China. And I said, look, I am president of the United States of America. Yeah, he is. <laughs> That's true. For the United States president to remain silent on a clear violation of human rights is totally inconsistent with who we are, what we are, and what we would do. And what we believe in. What we believe. What we believe. And so I'm not going to remain silent. Can I predict anything that's going to happen? Let alone here, let alone any other part of the world. No. Well, I, I can predict that you're probably going to poop in your depends in the near future. <laughs> like, that's pretty predictable. Oh, but I don't know why you're all so surprised the way I react. No one's ever wondered what I mean what I say. The question is, I sometimes say all that I mean. You know, that joke didn't work the last 400 times you told it. Um, again, look at Confused. You've been caught lying over and over again. A plagiarizer, a liar, come on. You're, you know, if they, they, they don't even try to count your lies in gumballs at CNN. What is, a, you know, what about your response to the fist bump? On the issue, on the issue of climate, Joe Manchin obviously made significant news right now, which appears to be torpedoing what was one of your biggest priorities as it relates to energy and to climate back at home. Your message to those Americans right now who are looking for that relief that would have a wide impact as it affects the climate and energy specifically. I am not going away. I'm going to use every power I have as president to. He's not going away. It's, I'm not going away. Listen to this thing. Unbelievable. This is a meme right here. I got to grab this one. That relief that would have a wide impact as it affects the climate and energy specifically. I am not going away. I'm going to use every power I have as president to continue to fulfill my pledge to move toward dealing with global warming. Thank you, Mr. Very president. Much. It's okay, there it is. That's a beam there. So I want to revisit this. I'm going to get to Britney Spears, and she um, is clearly not singing on her Instagram, even though she's claiming she is. Um, <laughs> but this guy, Dave Coulier, 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 is a creeper. He's a big-time creeper. And he's talking about, like, this. he's finally getting around to this song. And, you know, there's a significant age difference. And, uh, you know, I went through the whole timeline and all the fishy stuff and, Things to do with him. Uh, but here he is, and um, I want to read the lyrics to the song. Uh, but he said this, and, uh, you know, it's something I wanted to cover more in depth. This is from my video yesterday. I started listening to it, and I thought, ooh, I think I may have really hurt this woman. And that <laughs> <laughs> So he says he thinks he may have really hurt this woman. Um, so let's read the song lyrics ourselves and see if he was right about that. This is her song, You Ought to Know, and there's other songs on the album about him. I want you to know that I'm happy for you. I wish nothing but the best for, your bo for you both, which doesn't sound consistent with the rest of the song. An older version of me, is she perverted like me? <laughs> 
So she was perverted as a young girl. So she's 20 years old. They said that she'd start dating him when she was 18, but it seems like they were dating for a while before that. And then she says, would she go down on you in a theater? Is she perverted like me? Would she go down on you in the theater? Does she speak eloquently? And would she have your baby? I'm sure she'd make a really excellent mother. And so um, the going down the theater part and the eloquent part, you know, um, she's basically saying that he um, undermined her, right, in terms of um, <laughs> a variety of things. And they broke up because she didn't have babies because she was basically still a teenager. And he wanted to have babies because he was, you know, heading on the back half of 30, right? Um, and then she says, because the love that you gave that we made wasn't able to make it enough for you to be open wide. No, every time you speak her name, does she know how you told me you'd hold me until she, until you died, till you died, but you're still alive, m and <laughs> Remember, she's screaming this song. You know, I dislike Alanis Morissette. I dislike this whole thing. And it's like a, like almost the beginning of the Me Too. And there's a lot of feminist stuff here. But in terms of a bitter song, this is a well-written song. And I'm here to remind you of the mess you left when you went away. It's not fair to deny me of the cross I bear that you gave to me. You, you, you ought to know. You seem very well. Things look peaceful. I'm not quite as well. <laughs> I thought you should know. Did you forget about me, Mr. Duplicity? She's calling him duplicitous. I hate to bug you in the middle of dinner. It was a slap in the face how quick, quickly I was replaced. And are you thinking of me when you F her? So, um, again, this is the lyrics. We're not going to go through that, but... She, she um, screamed it, and then she says, because the joke that you laid in the bed, that was me, and I'm not, gonna fa I'm not going to fade as soon as you close your eyes and you know it, and every time I, I scratch my nails down someone else's back, I hope you feel it. Well, can you feel it? And so Dave Coulet's response to this was, I started listening to it, and I thought, Ooh, I think I may have really hurt this woman. And <laughs> I started listening to it and I thought, ooh, I think I may have really hurt this woman. I started listening to it and I thought, ooh, I think I may have really hurt this woman. One of my viewers pointed out that she wasn't a woman yet. I mean, she should have said girl, right? Um, but anyways, and then all the other stuff with Dave, Dave Coulier. All right, let's move to Britney Spears. Britney Spears sings new rendition of Baby One More Time a cappella. And here's her thing. She's got a creepy rose thing. She always got this Project Rose, as she calls it. Not going to get into that, but it's creepy. And then here's, I don't know what that is, some castle thing. So this was, I think, her first single. I, I don't know. doesn't matter. But this is how she sounded back then. And again, auto-tuned. Okay, she looked crazy back then. Oh, baby, baby, how was I supposed to know that something wasn't right here? Oh. So something has happened to her voice, um, aside from the auto-tuning. And I suspect that she's either got a sur surrogate singing for her <laughs> or there's been some mass manipulation with the computer. Oh, baby, baby, I shouldn't have let you go. This is me yesterday doing laundry and separating clothes. I haven't shared my voice in an extremely long time, maybe too long. And now you're right outside and show me how you want it to be. Tell me, baby, cause I need to know now. Because my loneliness is killing me. And I, I'm... 
Yeah, that sounds a little bit more like Britney. <laughs> this person says legend. The problem with this is, this is a pop emergency. We waited for this for so long. I love your natural voice, but I love it more seeing you comfortable sh showing it to the world. Your deep natural voice is the best. Your voice is beautiful. Hit me with those vocal lyrics. Here's the problem. So somebody had the raw audio file leaked on a Britney concert, right? There's several of these out there. Um... And this is before they auto-tune it and put it out to the fans at a concert. And this is what you sounded like. She loves me, this Hollywood girl. She is so lucky, but what does she find? Okay, so that's what Britney really sounds like. <laughs> You know, we already, the, the dancing is suspect, but the, the singing is worse. So the thing to remember is most of these celebrities aren't really good at what they're supposed to be good at, right? You, you can't fake whether you can play sports or not, right? You can't, you know, you can't compete and be out there, even if they rig the game. If you can't run fast, I mean, you can't put somebody who's, got no athletic ability out there and fake it right and acting you know i mean it's pretty evident when somebody sucks at acting we've seen it with comedians they can fake a laugh track lots of not funny stuff on saturday night live and people will laugh because they think everyone else is laughing at it and you know we've seen i mean just horrible sketches not funny people not funny comedians who've been pushed out there who are you know mediocre at best in terms of their I mean, they're just not funny. And so, you know, you can kind of fake that. You can't fake sports. You really can't fake acting. I mean, if someone sucks at acting, you're going to see it. And you can't fake dancing, although Britney's no great dancer, but she can dance, right? In terms of choreography, she can follow it and do it. And she used to be better. Obviously, she's a little crazier now. Uh, but singing, they can fake it because they've been able to manipulate voices for a number of years now i showed you halsey singing with bono neither one of them can sing right and that was brutal like that was a, a video i just did i don't know when maybe uh on my other channel i've covered that a number of times they're on jimmy kimmel's um red brand and she can't sing like she's got a horrible voice <laughs> you know um you know your voice is something that isn't always going to be good like you know i know this from uh, talking every day and some days you know your voice is hoarser and it's hard for me to get through some of these things you can strain your voice and so your voice isn't something that's guaranteed as you get as you get older it's worse but madonna isn't a good singer kelly perry isn't a good singer i mean really can't sing at all right and so why do they make these people celebrities when they're not good singers you know they just manufacture celebrities for other reasons like britney spears you know, she had vocal training and dance training for years. She was a part of that whole Disney cabal, right? She was part of that whole Disney, you know, that crazy Disney world, Disney kids. And they just turned her and Madonna into these iconic figures, and neither one of them was great at it, either of those things. They're, you know, they're competent dancers, right? They can follow choreography. So their dancing wasn't an issue. But they're better dancers, and they're certainly lots of better singers. You know, people go to Hollywood and they go to, you know, I mean, they can get classically trained and, and whatever they do, and they can go out there and it's not based in merit, right? I mean, it's based in how much you're willing to prostitute yourself and, you know, all the other factors that go into them, you know, propping you up and making you into one of these epic celebrities, right? Because it's not, you know, it's not organic. It doesn't happen in some natural way. It's controlled. And oftentimes these people aren't good at what they're supposed to be good at, right? And they're crazy and they're, you know, they're easily controlled and they, you know, they don't really get the money that they, you know, that you think they get, right? I mean, that's the whole thing about her conservatorship. 
Like they don't, you know, they often die broke and, and if they, you know, they stop producing, they're no longer a cash cow. They no longer can provide milk for their family. That I supplied milk to my family? They kill them off, right? And we've seen that before because they're worth more dead and they have all this royalty money and now they are, you know, they're, um, they're no longer valuable alive. And so, you know, people who want to be celebrities, you should know all of that stuff I just said. <laughs> Because it's all fake and it's not, you know, it doesn't matter how much talent you have or, you know, it's just, I mean, whether they choose you or not and what you're willing to do to get that position and how much you're willing to be controlled. You're basically a, a slave to the people that, you know, create these so-called stars. Anyway, only spirituality will save this world. It's Paul Romano. Definitely reporting from the Apocalypse and the Ascension. Everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.